Meave arrived at the walls of Gradobor, famed for fine rugs and woven tapestries. The city's artisans had been at work, no doubt pressed by the Nilfgaardians, for atop the tallest spire, that of the town hall, flapped a lustrous ebony flag, a sun of golden threads at its center. So vast was the banner, Gascon whistled in admiration. Gotta admit, the black clads certainly have panache. And a vast and powerful army, I'd remind you, Reynard interjected. Arblists line the walls, that stench in the air, hot tar, and our scouts claim the black clads stand armed to the hilt with the best Mahakam has to offer. Victory's not likely to come cheap, I fear. At a price I'm not willing to pay, said Meave, tensing. Let them sit there and stew. Gradable's not vital to victory. The Lyrians yet again resumed their march, though some of them glanced over their shoulders. The garish black banner seemed to stare back, a grim reminder that Nilfgaard was a force to be reckoned with. The Lyrians looked again upon Gradable's walls, coal black banners flying over them. As I said afore, Your Grace, said Reynard softly, victory won't come cheap. No cost is too high, said Meave, a hardness in her voice. Reynard, Gascon, ready our men to attack. The Lyrians needed no more encouragement. Since arriving, they had reveled in anticipation of taking the city, then ripping the banner from its spire. It will be difficult, Your Grace. The walls are strong. Gate. Someone's opening the gate! Forward, march! Victory, Your Grace! The city is ours! The battle for Gradobor was a hard fight, though not quite as hard as most had thought it might be. During the assault, at its critical juncture, a blow fell from the blue. The unlikely heroes Merchants and burghers brought together by the city's guilds. A wave of them, all riled, swarmed the blackclads at the gates and opened them wide to let Lyria in. Onward! Follow me! As fighting died down around the city, Meave rode for the town hall on a personal quest. Nilfgaard's vast, garish banner rippled overhead. With its halyard cut, it plunged like a great black bird, stricken. It was the last any would see of the golden sun over Gradobor. Three cheers! Hip, hip, hooray! The Lyrians were victorious, though not without aid. Meave met with the merchants who had roused the townsfolk, inspired them to rise up and fight. Many of my soldiers, dozens, perhaps hundreds, owe you their lives today, said the Queen. For that, I am deeply grateful. No, deeply indebted. Should you know a way I might repay the debt, don't for a moment hesitate to ask. The merchants exchanged glances, nodded, grunted, agreed with each other without uttering a word. Then one, a clothfuller, his moustache most robust, stepped forth, bowed low, and spoke for them all. Your Majesty, the invaders brought laws. Laws what don't agree with customs we've long held. Non-humans they forced us to accept. Let them join our guilds, sit on the city council. It's right ridiculous it is. These treacherous dwarves, why, they've been on their side from the start, so it's no wonder. But, well, the Nilfgaardian reforms, we'd like you to revoke them. Non-humans must know their place. An awkward silence ensued. All turned their eyes to the Queen, awaiting her response. Your city, Meave began slowly after a pause. Your rules, so be it. I hereby strike down all Nilfgaard's reforms. The townsmen grasped each other's shoulders and vigorously shook hands, toothy grins spreading upon all their faces. Yet when they asked the Queen to stay and feast, she politely but firmly declined. Her army left Gradobor that very day. She rode at its fore, angry and silent. 
I know. Me finally blurted to Reynard, her eyes still facing forward. I know I granted a wicked request. But I can't hope to easily end hate, distrust, wipe away years of bloodshed. Not with one decree. To force those tradesmen to accept non-humans, allow them into their guilds, would have changed nothing. Do you understand, Reynard? Alas, she could not tell, for Reynard held his tongue. Gabor Zigrin was not the silent type and was wont to be blunt. He asked to see the Queen at the first opportunity. We have not always seen eye to eye, began the dwarf, a note of pain and sadness in his voice. But I've always respected your decisions. That is, to the day. I fear this is where we part, lass. I've got to go. So fear you well. Neve made no attempt to stop him. She knew not to try. Gabor had left her side, never to return. I agree. Non-humans must know their place, began the Queen. So listen closely all. Whether elf, dwarf, gnome or human, it matters not. My subjects are equal. Your Grace, you said it thy son. Were it not for us... My troops would have died, true. Yet among the dead, there'd have been dwarves of Mahakam, I've no doubt. Dwarves who agreed to fight by my side when none believed I could prevail. The tradesman huffed, the tradesman puffed. Meave silenced them with a firm swipe of her hand. She left Gradabor that very day, furious at the city's merchants for their bigotry, and irked at an unpleasant truth, that even the vile Nilfgaardians occasionally got something right. Come nightfall, the Lyrians pitched camp. Meave sat down and stared into the fire. Her officers, advisers, kept their distance, unsure if her eyes burned with the fire's reflection or a fury deep inside. Only Gabor dared approach her. You can. Not lying back, I asked myself. Gabor, you bampot, you gone bar me. Left my home, clan, family. And for why? To follow a human queen. But the day you showed me, I made the right choice. Gabor stood and went back to the mess tent. Had he lingered a bit longer, he'd have seen me smile. Dwarves don't let humans into Mahakam. Why have we got to let them into our homes? Rivia for Rivians! Dwarves to the mountains, elves to the forests, halflings to their... Uh, halfling holes. Dwarves are good to die for Rivia, but need to live in it, eh? Well, well. Our very own queen on the Dwarf Elder's leash. Why am I not surprised? Beautifully knocked those racist knob-lickers, Duna Peg! Hear, hear, dear queen! <laughs>